I ask my students, I, I teach a critical thinking class, and because I get so many students from areas where coal mining is what they do, I've, I've been asking them, you know, for several years now, what do you think about the coal mines? Um, and I, I get the same response, coal keeps the lights on. Um, okay, well what does that mean? Well, it's jobs, and blah blah blah, and it creates electricity. And I said, okay. And I said, um, and I, I get we all, to some degree, um, make a little deal with the devil with our jobs, right? Because you need, um, you need money. So that's why we do this, right? Yes. And I say, well, okay. Well, where's the money then? I said, this should be one of the richest states. But yet, our per capita income, we're, last time I saw, I believe we're second lowest in the country. Where's that money? And they and the students are you know they they kind of sit you can see them thinking about it, they're kind of baffled so I ask them I say okay well maybe it's maybe it's tax revenue so the state should be benefiting where you know where's the you know cutting edge schools where's the you know fabulous roadways where's the infrastructure where's the where's all the things that rich states have we don't have that again we're at the bottom so I ask them if if coal is about money. Where's the money? And sooner or later they say, well, the people who own the coal mines have the money. But that's not you, <laughs> right? So why aren't you, um, why aren't you questioning this? Why aren't you challenging this? And that, that's often how we kick start um, for many of them to question things they've never questioned before. Um, actually, one of my favorite stories She's now 10, but my stepdaughter, when she was 6, we were driving down the road, we saw one of those processing plants with the steam, smoke, <laughs> billowing into the air. And she asked me what it was, so I was trying to explain it to her, as a 6-year-old could understand it. And, and she said, well, if it's, if it's bad for the air, why do they do it? And I said, well, because people want jobs, and these jobs pay more than some other jobs, so they're willing to take some risks so that they can, you know, have a little more money. And she's six, right? She's in the back seat of the car, and she gets real quiet, and she says, But if you're sick, and you spend all your money on doctors, then you really don't have more money, do you? And, and I, you know, you're right. And she sits there a few more minutes, and you know, I thought the conversation was over, we were driving down the road. And from the back she says, and if you're dead, it doesn't matter how much money you have. She was six, right? And I told her at the time, I said, I should just drive you straight over to the Capitol and let you, you know, walk around and talk to some people. Because the six-year-old got it. Um, the, the people who work in the mines, I, I understand their desires, the people who, who work in the industries that support the mines, I understand. I cannot believe that there's not some ways to do this a little bit better and that they these companies, if what they're really interested in is energy production, that they're not looking at other avenues of ways to do that. Um, so I'm not against coal mining. I'm against a, a, an ideology that never gets questioned. I'm, ag I'm, against, I'm against slogans. Coal keeps the lights on. So does wind and, and solar energy, and I can still drink my water. I'm okay with that. <laughs> we can make some changes. You know, there's, it, it's not overnight. I'm not looking to put people out of jobs or take away their food. Um, but I am trying to keep my family safe. There's got to be a balance in there. So, right, and I know there. But the people who come from those communities, um, there's a lot of conversation that when other industries try to come in, that coal is so big and so powerful that they are run out, um, and then there are no other options. Um, in higher education, there's a, a fair amount of conversation about um, state legislation. Um, standards, how, um, not necessarily funding, but the expectations, what types of schools are um, created, allowed, and 
there was discussion that the coal industry is strong enough and powerful enough that it impacts our government officials so that the types of schools that are promoted and encouraged are ones that can put out quickly and almost on demand um, skilled laborers as that industry um, needs and wants those workers. And almost, almost a rejection of um, anything that would challenge or question that. Um, again, I, I haven't fact checked these things. But it is interesting the, the levels to which coal reaches um, you know, the, the two biggest universities, Marshall and West Virginia University, um, up until this past year, I guess is the last one, played in the coal bowl. I, you know, you're talking about academics, you're talking about sports, but it's the coal bowl. Um, it, it's far reaching in ways that you cannot imagine. And, and this is coming from someone who you know, grew up in a farming state and then went to grad school in Texas. I mean, oil doesn't have that kind of reach. Um, the industries of these other states don't reach into every aspect of life in the ways that coal does here. But it's still a conversation that everyone's having all the time. Why do you think they need to have that far reach into everyone's lives, unlike other industries? Because when you have a crisis like this, then you can control the outcome. Right? I mean, why, why would a state with, you know, the, the estimates I've seen are anywhere from 100,000 to 300,000. Um, if it's, if it's 100,000, that's still not something to forget or to laugh at. If it's 300,000, when you're talking about a state with a population size of West Virginia, that's huge. And that there's not more of a public outcry you know, I, I would have expected fences to have been, you know, plowed down and riots outside these mines right now. Nothing. In fact, there's a lot of defense of them. Well, it was an accident. Um, it, they'll get it cleaned up. It's not as bad as they say they are. The media is just trying to scare everybody. Even if it, even if this chemical cannot harm you at all, still, what do you think should be the reaction? I, I still chemical? think there should be outrage because. We should get to determine if this is um, something I want to be concerned about or not. Um, a friend and I went into Charleston yesterday, and we were both saying it'll be a really long time before we go out to dinner there, because for for the amount of chemical they were talking about being spilled, for the for the intense reaction that happened afterwards. To now suddenly be like, oh, well, you know, we're flushing these lines. We could be back up in a day or so. Hmm. You know, I'm not sure. I'm trusting that. I think you want, I think you want the, uh, when there's a crime that's been committed, you want someone arrested. You don't care who it is as long as someone's arrested. And I feel like right now they just, a, a large population of people just want someone to say it's okay to drink whether it really is or not. Um, we'll watch in the areas that were affected in the next year to 20 years and we'll watch and see what diseases, what chronic conditions happen um, that, that aren't a problem, that they're telling us now is not a problem. You mentioned a little bit that you're surprised that there's not a public outcry to, to a higher level than there already is in this region, but what about a national outcry? What have you seen on that? Have you looked at the national news at all? <coughs> yes. Um, uh, a friend and I have been watching the articles that have been written. We watch the comments afterwards, and, and there's a, there's a, there's a push-pull. Um, there's people who are outraged on our behalf, um, and there are people who um, think we're stupid for not being more upset. Um, you know, kind of the, um, well if this is, if this is the industries you support and this is what you do, you kind of have it coming. Um, which is, which is largely unfair but it's part of our political climate right now of blame that people are responsible for their own um, pain, suffering, injustice. Um, 
I don't think those are reasonable responses. I don't think they're intelligent responses. Um, certainly don't think they're knowledgeable responses. But um, but if you can blame the person, then you're eased of any guilt or obligation that you have to help or um, contribute, and so it's easier to blame people. Um, I think I think West Virginia is a state that has been abused repeatedly by outside interests, whether it's been the timber industry, whether it's been coal industry, um, the chemical industries, and these industries are often owned and or managed by non-West Virginia owners and residents. Um, and I think people in the state are um, distrustful of outside interests. I think rightfully so. I think it's been proven to them again and again and again that when people from outside come in, they um, mess things up. They make things worse. And so to some degree, I think part of this support of coal has been um, yeah, this is an awful burden, but it's our burden to bear. Um, don't, don't come in and try to fix it, because whenever you come, you just make things worse. Um, and I think some of the reactions by people outside of the state validate this for them. Um, that no one is interested in helping them. If you've, if you've been watching even the local news coverage, most of the conversations have been about West Virginians helping West Virginians. The real emphasis has been on, we'll fix this ourselves, we help ourselves, we help each other, which is certainly admirable, um, but it's not unique. You know, uh, Hurricane Katrina, um, people in Louisiana help people in Louisiana. Um, when you, I'm, I'm from Arkansas. Tornadoes, trust me, when, when a town gets hit, the rest of the state kicks in. That is not unique. What's unique I think here, having been here nine years, and certainly having been an outsider when I came in, um, and, and still being an outsider, my husband still tells me that I'm an outsider, um, is that help isn't coming, and that if it does come, it will misuse, misunderstand, make worse whatever help they bring. Um, so let us just do it ourselves. Um, I think I think this is smart, given past experiences, and I think it hurts them as well. I think it hurts the state.